Hello again everybody, and today we're going to talk about something slightly different, and that is the Tunguska event of 1908. Now the Tunguska event was a massive explosion which occurred in the middle of Siberia on the 30th of June 1908. To this day, no two scientists can quite agree as to the cause, and the scale of the damage is absolutely immense. So, like I said, the Tunguska event happened on the 30th of June 1908, and to this day it is still the biggest recorded explosion in human history. To give you a wee bit of perspective, the seismic vibrations were felt and recorded over a thousand kilometres away. 300 miles away, the witnesses reported hearing what they described as deafening thunder. And at 180 miles away, the fiery cloud was visible, and up to 60 miles away, 60 miles away from what, what scientists have determined as the epicentre of the blast, witnesses were thrown to the ground by the shockwave, with, with some of them even being, being knocked unconscious. Now these photographs that were seen here, the, the first set, the black and white ones, were taken in 1911 as part of an expedition in to try to figure out exactly what happened with the, the Tunguska impact. Theories range from meteors and a comet to black hole collisions, attacks by aliens and even Nikola Tesla testing his uh, famous Vordenklyft tower. Now you can see the scale of the damage was absolutely immense. What we do know about Tunguska is that something came tumbling out of the sky uh, around about 8am in the, the morning of the 30th of June in central Siberia, just next to the Podkamenaya Tunguska River and that's in what is modern day Krasnoyarsk Krai. Despite the area being sparsely populated, the, like I said, there was immense damage. They claim that up to 80,000 reindeer perished as a result of this, this uh, explosion. This was the single largest recorded explosion in human history. It beats out even even the, the atomic weapons that were used at the end of World War II. I think one of the accounts that I read says it was up to 1,000 times larger than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Now, despite extensive searches and study by scientists, to this day there has been no evidence found that would suggest this was the result of a meteor impact. We have found no fragments of a meteor, I mean zilch, nil pois, and there is also no crater from the impact site. The leading theory is that this was an airburst explosion from a comet which scientists estimate would have had to weigh up to 1 million tonnes, which seems absolutely ludicrous. Now this is also up for scrutiny as we have never recorded any comets getting quite this close to the Earth. Comets as they com are composed of ice usually burn up about 30 kilometres in the atmosphere, whereas this was supposed to have been detonated just over 5 kilometres from the, the surface of the Earth. You can see that the damage is absolutely immense. But the, the main thing I want to talk about in this video is the eyewitness accounts. The damage is, like I said, absolutely immense. The shockwave from Tunguska travelled around the world twice. And just to give you how, uh, how, how massive the, the perspective of this was, the uh, 80 million trees it was apparently taken out. The explosion damaged what would be equivalent in size to modern day Moscow. And around 2,500 square kilometres were, were actually damaged trees were set ablaze, they were ripped through the ground, they were overturned and uh, the impact zone, the, the, the damage is no limited to a radial or a circular shape but it takes on the shape of a butterfly wing, an, an, an odd shaped oblong. Now like I said this, this occurred near the, the Podkamenaya River and that is what we are looking at here. And on this Podkamenaya River you can see some unusual structures, these are known as the Chun Pillars because they look just like that, they look like pillars and just as we've seen with the Devil's Hill Fort also in Siberia they, they have a distinct artificial artificial look about them. A couple of other photos of Podkamenaya here, you can see these, these pillars look quite unusual as do the blocks at the foot of them because they look quite like blocks, you can see some of them take on almost perfect rectangular shapes. Now the main thing I wanted to talk about in this video was the eyewitness accounts because the eyewitness accounts are absolutely fascinating. The flight path of the object was visible to these eyewitnesses for at least 5 minutes 
and the same eyewitness accounts also mention multiple explosions and a lot of them reference, a lot of them having been in wars, reference it as, as sounding almost exactly like an artillery barrage. This is just uh, another another object that has been found on the side of this Podkamanaya River, which is almost certainly artificial. We can almost we, we can all, almost still make out the, 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 the marks from where that has been cut. Oh, that one's broken. There's the same chum pillars, and you can see the same as same as with the Devil's Hill Fort in Siberia. They look completely and utterly artificial to the to the average observer. So elderly witnesses say that the sky was ripped open, a streak from north to south having a sharp tip in its end. Then it flew towards Earth and split in two, followed by five or six quakes, bang, bang, bang. As the windows began to violently shake, the weakest ones shattered to the ground. Now that is a quote from an eyewitness from the Axonova village. Another quote is, Although the flash had been flown by very quickly, I managed to notice that it was round in shape, the size of a haystack, it was red hot, the sparks trailing behind. The ball of fire then disappeared behind the horizon, followed a a couple of minutes later by several explosions from where it had fallen. They sounded like cannon shots. Old soldiers shouted, It's war. Now this is from the Preb... Prebrozhanka village. This picture right here, sorry, just to interrupt eyewitness accounts, this picture here is a, a, a map of what scientists have called the Bright Nights of 1908. Now this took place on the night of June the 30th, and in each place marked on this map, it was possible to read a, news pi- a newspaper at night time. You could walk down the street in Scotland, there are recorded accounts of cricket games being played at night time, because the sky was illuminated just as it was daytime. Scientists to this day have still not got any explanation for for quite why this happened. This is a barogram, so these are a, a micro barogram, sorry. Uh, this, it essentially detects the shockwave, the seismic activity. And you can see all across England these, uh, th- these machines picked up this seismic activity. And when composed you can see that it's not just one seismic waves, it's multiple, one, two, three, four, five. However, the first is obviously slightly more extreme. Skip the ones. This is Tunguska today, and you can see that some of the damage is still visible despite uh, any aftermath of the Tunguska event. The trees grew extremely rapidly. Some of the vegetation was recorded as grown up to eight times faster than it should have done. This same effect was also observed in Chernobyl. So another eyewitness account said, On that day we were on our way to the fields. At first we heard a terrible thunder that made the horses come to a stop. We saw blackness in the sky and fire tails behind that blackness. An extremely dim fog entered the atmosphere, blotting out the sun and darkness set in. Now this is from the same Prebrazhenka village. Now it blotted out the sun. We're just getting into the good stuff here. And another one, it was the season for ploughing fields. At breakfast time, I was sitting on the porch of my house in the Vanavara trading post. i just picked an axe to hammer a hoop on a barrel when, in the north, along the Vesilia Lechonkul Tunguska Road, the sky split and lit up in fire. Above the forest, the rift in the sky grew wider, and soon the entire northern side was ablaze. At that moment, it felt so hot as if my shirt was burning up and I wanted to take it off and throw it to the ground. Now, you can see that this account, uh, and a lot of the accounts make it sound less like a, 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 a natural formation, a celestial object, and more like a weapon. If I can go here for a second. This is the Wikipedia page for the Tunguska event, and there's a couple of, I've highlighted them, a couple of choice eyewitness accounts. Chikarin and I got out of, th- out of our sleeping bags and wanted to run out, but then a thunder struck. This was the first thunder. The earth began to move and rock, and wind hit our hut and knocked it over. My body was pushed down by sticks, but my head was in the clear. Then I saw a wonder. Trees were falling. The branches were on fire. It became mighty bright. How can I say this? As if there was a second sun. Now a lot of these eyewitness accounts claim that it was as bright as a second sun. My eyes were hurt and I even closed them. It was like what the Russians call lightning. And immediately there was a loud thunderclap. This was the second thunder. The morning was sunny, there were no clouds. Our sun was shining brightly as usual, and suddenly there came a second one. Chekarin and I had some difficulty getting out from under the remains of our hut. We saw that above, but in a different place. So there was another flash, two flashes and two thunders so far. And loud thunder came. This was the third thunderstrike, so that's three thunders they're describing it as. 
and we looked at the fallen trees, watched the tops get snapped off, watched the fires. Suddenly Checker and yelled, look up, and pointed with his hand. I looked there and saw another flash, so that's three flashes, and it made another thunder, but the noise was less than before. This was the, th the fourth strike. Now I remember well there was also one more thunder strike, but it was small and somewhere far away, where the sun goes to sleep. So the Tunguska event, which we all imagine is one singular meter impact, one singular comet impact, the eyewitness accounts are describing it as multiple impacts. Here's another one. The author of these lines was meantime in the forest about six kilometers north of Kerensk, and heard to the northeast some kind of artillery barrage that repeated in intervals of 15 minutes at least 10 times. In Kerensk, a few buildings in the walls facing northeast windows, glass shook. So, so how in any way, shape or form, if we are to believe the only people that witnessed this, this event, can we say that this was a natural, a, a natural or celestial object, if it repeated in intervals of 15 minutes at least 10 times? When the meteorite fell, strong tremors in the ground were observed, and near Lovett village in Cairns, Guzid, two strong explosions were heard, as if from large calibre artillery. Now, none of these eyewitness are describing a singular impact, or even two from the blast and the shockwave, they're all describing multiple. On the 17th, an unusual atmospheric event was observed. At 7.45, a noise akin to a strong wind was heard. Immediately afterwards, a horrific thump, followed by an earthquake that literally shook the buildings as if they were hit by a log or a heavy rock. The first thump was followed by a second, and then a third. Then the interval between the first and the third bumps was accompanied by underground rattle, similar to a railway upon which dozens of trains are travelling at the same time. Afterwards, for five to six minutes, an exact likeness, an exact likeness this witness is describing it as, of artillery fire was heard. Fifty to sixty salvos in short equal intervals, which got progressively weaker. After one and a half to two minutes after one of the barrages, six more thumps were heard like cannon firing, but individual, loud and accompanied by tremors. Now again, this is another account describing this as almost, or as he said, exactly like an artillery fire. And that's, like I said, this is on the official Wikipedia page for the Tunguska event. We can see the damage was absolutely vast if, if we're still seeing traces here over a hundred years later. But these trees that we see here were studied extensively by scientists at the time and even today and they found in almost every single tree that they studied there was traces of artificial radiation. I think it was, I, I, I would be lying if I tell you, Isotope 9 or something they called it, you can google it and find out, but there was artificial radiation found in almost every single one of these trees. However, the mainstream sources, uh, as, as I read it, tried to explain it as ionisation energy, uh, or ionisation that occurred due to the vast amounts of energy that was released. Although this vast destruction led to the death of almost 80,000 reindeer, the, the human deaths were, were relatively low, if not none at all, and mainstream sources say that this is as a result of the low population density. However, there are recorded reports, there are recorded written accounts of local elders warning residents not to visit the area, which would later become the epicentre, up to a month prior. And as they recorded and wrote it, it says they, they warned the locals not to visit where the god of Agda would descend. Now, there are also accounts amongst the uh, Evenk people who settled the, or who lived in the area at the time, and they said that shamans travelled from afar to the Evenk people and persuaded them to leave their homes as, as a result of a great, uh, or because a great catastrophe was coming out their way. Another account is found in the notes, the autobiographical notes of the Omsk Department of Land and Waterways employee v Vyastilev Shishkov, and he writes about the local postmaster informing him that a month prior to the explosion, there was a group of unknown strangers that appeared in the Tunguska region with strange metal boxes. Now again, this, this report is written down, it's recorded, and it actually stands in a museum today, these people that he writes about avoided contact with the locals and disappeared into the Tunguska Taiga without even a guide. Now this is a, a, a vast, vast forest at a time before this destruction and going without a guide was more than likely a death sentence. He writes again that the postmaster informed him that these same people were seen again six months after the explosion heading to the, the local railway station and attempting to get the hell out of Dodge. Now I thought this was extremely interesting. It's not something I usually I usually talk about or think about or spend a lot of time on, but when I when I read that Wikipedia account, I thought there can't be many people that know this. 
there can be many people that have heard this described as exactly like an artillery barrage and even in some cases 50 to 60 salvos anyway guys this was not the the usual video uh, I just when I find something interesting I would like I, I feel like sharing it with you guys the the usual videos will be coming back soon I have I have another one planned on Rostov and Don or another one I'm ready to record on Rostov and Don I just thought I'd get this out and, and let you guys know that there is probably far more to the Tunguska event than than we know until the next time, peace, hope you enjoyed it.